uh, I'm now really recognizing that six, seven months into this whole program that uh, I am significantly better in my profession. I'm more productive. I'm I, my clarity of thought is significantly greater. My mental health, which I didn't, I didn't really even would have considered myself to have any mental health concerns at all before, and and I still wouldn't. However, my mental health is significantly stronger now because of the confidence and the realization that when you put your mind to something, you can do it. Here he is. Hey, the good man. morning, Andy. How are you? The, the man, the myth. I'm very well, sir. How are you? <laughs> the man, the myth. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> Seriously, I, I, I've been keeping a close eye, man. Like, um, you, you've been tearing it up, haven't you? Like, I've, I've, I've seen what you've been up to, man. You've been doing, you've been doing really well, no? Yeah, I, I have to admit, when, uh, you know, when the first six months ended and and Ash had me complete uh, the before, well, we had the before pictures, but the after pictures. Uh, I actually did not give myself enough credit to really appreciate how much progress had been made from day one until that, you know, end of that five and a half month period. It almost felt a bit narcissistic, but I'm looking at that photo and I'm like, what the, that's not the same person. But, uh, had you yeah. not, had you not really been sort of, had you not sort of noticed it as you'd been going sort of through it? And, and it's normal not to actually, because people just focused on where we are, but I guess had you not really sort of taken a moment to reflect back until until the end of that first six months so that is that the first time you really sort of look back at where you'd come from you know i, I looked every like every week you know i follow the program I, I took a look every week and i was paying attention but i had never done a photo where i was flexing but and so yeah. i did two th- and on that one ash was like well get yourself a little pumped up and you know and, and flex for this photo and i'd never done that i'd always kind of taken my photo soft you know, uh, you know, not yeah. immediately after a workout. So I, I did a really kind of fairly intense uh, workout that morning. And then I had my wife take the picture after while trying to flex to the best of my, you know, inexperienced ability. And then that picture came out like, holy crap. I was, Cause I hadn't seen it in that same way. That's, that's basically the thing. I hadn't seen it in that, that fashion. That manner. And it's, I mean, it's, it, it's first of all it makes a massive difference and I, and I think i remembered like in in one of our weekly meetings ash had, had put up like he'd shown to us in, like, individually like as, on the coaches meeting he said here's the progress and he's like yeah he's done well but i i know i know if we redo that picture and he's like just from a workout flex like you know like looking at best he'll look completely different because obviously he'd seen your pictures through and we're like okay cool yeah that's and then i think it was either the week or the week after later he, he then reshared and we were like wow like the the diff the, the difference not only in the flex to the unflexed but also then also back to the very beginning take me back i always love to know now obviously with the, the the hindsight and the sort of where you are now go back to maybe before we ever spoke you know maybe to the months or year before you know we you know you sort of started the program i always love to sort of go back and see what what where do you think you were you know in terms of your physique, what you were you struggling with? What was the catalyst that decided to make you change? Like, how were things before you started? So, you know, before I started, you know, I had, you know, it always been fairly easy for me to keep the weight off. I'm a relatively small framed um, guy. And and I had noticed that as I'd gotten through my middle, early to mid 40s, I couldn't will the pounds away anymore. And yeah. the physique that I had maybe in my early 30s, you know, it's kind of the frog in the pressure cooker type of situation where it just slowly goes away and you don't recognize it the, until yeah. it's far too gone. And then I need somebody like you, Andy, to say, hey, you're not what you think you are. And let me show you what you could be. And so when I took a look at my beginning picture, I hadn't actually been taking i had been looking at myself in a mirror. And so when I took that beginning picture in the day that I started, I looked at that and said, wow, I hadn't realized how far gone I let myself go. And I was still working out, you know, before we started uh, with NBD, I was still working out, but it was uh, scattered. Uh, the program didn't have any direction. I didn't have any goals. I thought I was doing well. I thought I was eating well, but you know, I had no clue what a macro was. And so I don't think anybody can really say that they know what they're doing with their diet if they don't have, if they don't know the difference between a protein, uh, carb, and a fat. 
And so I was really kind of, I would say, much more confident in what I thought was going on than what was actually the case. I was pretty yeah. naive and I would say pretty lost. And what caused me to really think about joining this program is that it wasn't necessarily that I, I had woke up one morning and said, hey, I need to make a change. It was, I'm not where I want to be. And I'm thinking about later in life, I'm a forward thinking person. I'm thinking 10, 15, 20 years down the line. And I'm like, if I keep going the way that I'm going, I'm not going to be able to do the things that I want to do 15 years from now. And so that was really where my mindset was where, and thank you for putting the ads across on LinkedIn. That's how I found you. And I thought, you know what, a 30 minute consultation, what the heck, what do I have to lose and, you know, I wasn't really ready to start. I didn't have any goals in place. I didn't know what was capable. I had no idea seven, six months later that, you know, this would be you know, where I would be at. It's been quite a ride. I think it's um, and, and, and I think that's indicative to a lot of people. We, uh, You know, a, a lot of things you said there are indicative to a lot of things, which is one. And I mean, this with no disrespect to anybody, but people don't realize how far they've slipped away from where they think they are. Um, and it's normal because we're focused on business. We're focused on climbing that ladder, growing a business, we're nurturing a family, you know, all those things. And generally, the, you know, the men I speak to have sacrificed themselves on that journey to some degree, which is normal. It's a very nearly a masculine masculine thing to do that it's a trait of men to be like I'll, I'll 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 deal with work and i'll deal with family and i'll sort myself out later which is i understand that but it's a it's a negative end game isn't it because then you know i speak to a lot of people 40 45 plus and they suddenly realize you know in their in their head they're still a collegiate athlete they're like they's yeah. you know andy i've been an athlete all my life and i'm like look that stopped two and a half decades ago like that's when that ended and you know and, and i think that's that's, that's a difficult realization for a lot of people and then also to actually kind of understand and again what a lot of people tend to do i don't know if this was, was yourself but box ticking you know i go to the gym i tick a box i think about what i'm eating i tick a box but the difference between those then things being aligned and actually being a vehicle to take us to well the amazing results that you've got are two very very different things it's well it would be unreasonable to expect everybody walking around the planet to understand how to do those things. We couldn't come into your world and, and know exactly how you do your job and be able to, you know, you, you've, you've been doing that for years and you're great at that. Same with someone who might be a, a lawyer or an accountant or they, like those people are good at the things that they're good at, which I guess is why people come to us because we're specifically focused on the one thing that we're very, very good at doing, which is helping, you know, busy business leaders regain their health and wellness. And, and I think, you, you know, you've obviously done a fan, fantastic job. What elements would you say of the program do you think have been the most instrumental to you achieving the amazing results that you've achieved? That's a big question. And to think about the most instrumental components, I would say for me personally, it was the meal plan. And so, uh, you know, I had a history of working out, you know, I, I knew exercises. I didn't have a good plan going into this. Coming into this whole program, there's not one single person that knew me that would have said I needed to lose weight. Yep. You know, I was already thinner than almost everybody that I know. Uh, but it's the meal plan. When I and when I say the meal plan, what I'm talking about is the consistency. So having the same breakfast, the same lunch, and the same dinner every day set this pattern of this is what I do. This is you know, food is no longer. Uh, Food is really just the mechanism to create the energy that my body needs to do what it needs to do. And once yep. that became consistent, all of these other um, temptations became much less of a temptation. Yep. And, you know, I, I think I've spoken publicly about my relationship with alcohol prior to starting this program. And I thought that I was a social drinker. I also thought that I was in shape. And both of those two things were wrong. I realized quickly once I started this program, I was much more than a social drinker. It was impacting my health, my wellness, my performance at work, my relationships with family. And so I was really able to take control of that relationship. Mm. And um, that being one of the key things in the consistency in the meal plan meant that, um, and I think this gets under underrated or maybe not recognized as much as what it, what it could be. But the fact that I don't have to think about what I'm having for lunch, uh, breakfast, lunch, or dinner means that there are three less decisions every day that I have to make. It gives you, you know, we as humans... Band, yeah, band, you've now got bandwidth back to focus on work oh, and family, right? the things that are important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
it's it's amazing and and it and this is something it's like compound interest it takes time for to really realize this but three decisions every day less that my brain or my capacity is then left to go make decisions somewhere else in a more meaningful yep. manner that's yep. 21 decisions a week that's 30 plus decisions a month that's almost 1100 decisions a year that I can now make somewhere else. So yeah. it's the, the meal plan is the consistent kind of the, the cadence that keeps me rolling and the consistency from day to day that then the workout and the training program ties into. And, you know, it just sets such a solid foundation. And I'm going to tell you, it's it's not easy in that first two or three weeks to go from having quite a bit of variety and uh, maybe a scattered understanding of a meal and planning to go to this very regimented and consistent. I can't tell you how many people have said, you're doing what? You're mm. eating the same breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. How are you able it's, to it's, do that? It's it's weird though, isn't it? Because technically it's, we, the analogy, I would, if someone says to me, oh, I could never do that. I'm like, well, one, if you tell yourself you could never do something, then you are right. You could never do it. Mm-hmm. Like that's that. But also, if I said to someone, if I took you and locked you in a prison and fed you the same three meals every day, the same breakfast, I said you would eat them and eventually you'd thank me for them. So to say a human can't do that, I think is, well, here, you know, here you are. I know when I've competed, I ate the same meals at the same times with the same amounts for 16, 20 weeks to get into the, the best shape. Yeah. No, I'm not saying it is easy. And of course, there is temptation. But as a human, it's entirely possible to go, OK, OK, maybe maybe I have two versions of a breakfast. You know, maybe one I have on a, on a non-training day and one I have on a training day, like something like that. Or, you know, someone could have two versions of a breakfast that still achieve exactly the same macros, but could be different food, food variation. For example, someone might be having an omelette one day, OK? You know, and obviously maybe they don't want to eat eggs every morning. I get that because you might build up a bit of an intolerance, but then there could easily be a, another version of a meal that has exactly the same macros. That And when someone starts to see their life like that, it's like, oh, well, there are options, but I'm still, I'm still eating inside a framework that's going to get me to the goal. But it is interesting. And I imagine when you've, you know, when people first see you doing this, they think you're crazy, right? They're like, why on earth would you want to do that? But then they start to ask when they see the results, they're like, what what is it that you're doing? How how are you doing this? Right, they want to know all of a sudden, don't they? Yeah, and when when I go back to the the decision making, uh, I'm now really recognizing that six seven months into this whole program, that uh, I am significantly better in my profession. I'm more productive. I'm I, my clarity of thought is significantly greater. My mental health, which I didn't I didn't really even would have considered myself to have any mental health concerns at all before. And and I still wouldn't. However, my mental health is significantly stronger now because of the confidence and the realization that when you put your mind to something, you can do it. That's your body amazing. is really that your body really is a temple. It, it's we as humans, I think most humans, so you understand this, but uh, we don't give our bodies credit for what it's actually capable of. If you ask your body to do something you want it to do, as long as you ask in the right way over a you know a thoughtful period of time, it will give you what you ask of it. You just it's, have to have um, confidence in the process. Our, our bodies are an adaption machine. That you know, when people talk about, oh, I'm going to trick my body into something, it's like, yeah, that doesn't happen because our body's doing millions of things every second all of the time that we've we it, it, we haven't even got a clue what's going on we we live inside this thing that's one of the most complex thing well as far as we know it's the most complex thing in the universe because i don't think we found anything more complex yet um but people don't give their body credit and and themselves mentally where the mind goes the body follows so if someone starts to achieve something with their body it's ha- it's already pre-happened in their mind but what i think a lot of people do and again this isn't a criticism is they just don't really engage their brain in either finding the information that they don't know in other words seeking help and then applying it and then when they fail get back up and start again that's it like that's the only there is only there's only two there's only two differences between people who succeed and people who don't there are only two I can boil it down to just two things. One, people people that succeed start. That's the first one. And people that succeed start again when they fail. That's it. That's it. That's it. In other words, people that succeed just start at the thing. In other words, oh, you know how someone might be like, oh, you know, I'm going to start a business next year. I'm going to start a business next year. I'm going to start. Right. Start one already. Just start something. Get good at something and start. And then, you know, we we all fail at things and we should fail quickly. 
because the quicker we fail, the quicker we learn, the quicker we like people are scared of failure. We should be we as long as failure is not dangerous to us or the people around, people around us, we should be we should be searching out failure fast. And then we, people use the phrase uh, the, the phrase fail forward. In other words, you fail and you get back up and you move forward. But I think people fail quickly in terms of falling off a food plan or a training regime or, or whatever it might be. Like, OK, this is this, this isn't for me. I'll do something else. Getting in shape is not technically difficult. I'm not saying it's easy. We know we know that it's not easy, but technically it's not difficult. But what people are, are missing are then is then the accountability, the support, because all the answers to every question we've got are already sitting on the Internet. It's all, all there, but way too complicated and too confusing to go and really find the right information for us as an individual in the context it's needed in. Hence, somebody coming in. Whether that be us or somebody else, but somebody coming in, understanding how to listen to an individual, take in where they are, and then feedback just the stuff that they need to think about, nothing else. Just that, you know, people come into us and they're quite often, oh, but what about this? And what about that? And what about this? And we're like, forget that. We want you to do this, then this, then this, and repeat. Alphas, I interrupt this show with a simple message. This show is here to benefit you and your progression to the best version of yourself. But not only just you, it's also here to benefit the people around you, your loved ones, your friends, other alphas in your vicinity. So why not do a really cool thing today? Something that I would thank you for and maybe someone else would. Share this podcast with at least one other alpha out there who you know would benefit from it. Why not share the information, share the ability for someone else to grow? I'm sure they would thank you. I 100% would absolutely thank you. This podcast only grows by our listeners, our followers doing amazing things like giving us five-star reviews, downloading podcasts, subscribing, and then, of course, sharing it with other people. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Share it with one person. And, of course, drop us a five-star review, download the podcast, and, of course, subscribe. And now back to the show. Our demographic is, you know, exactly you. It's, you know, it's guys who are running businesses, very busy. And, and a lot of them have written themselves off. Quite honestly, you know, they, they, they maybe go to a gym where they see the 20 year olds who are, you know, obviously easier for them to get in shape. And we think we get past somewhere around the 40 mark and that's it. And everybody that we would, it's, it's just not true, is it? Everybody that we work with, if, if they're, if they're, you know, our body, people say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm over 40, my metabolism slowing down. We're like, no, 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 your metabolism slowing down because you've stopped bloody moving. Like, you, like that, that, you know, people, you've stopped moving and you're eating like an idiot. You're not sleeping well and you're highly stressed. No wonder your body's like just desperately trying to hang on to life. Our metabolism doesn't really technically slow down until probably the sort of 60 some odd, you know. I, I, it's wonderful that we get to see, you know, like, you know, guys like you come in and well, first of all, we can have the map and I say this a lot. We can have the map and we can have the GPS. We know the way to go, but we ain't doing the work. We then need amazing, you know, amazing guys like you to be like, okay, okay. I'm in. You got, you, you, you guys clearly know what you're doing. I've seen it. I thought I knew what I was doing. Might not have been quite right. I'm yours. I'm, I'm, I'm open to being coached because that's, yeah. that's also a skill in itself that some individuals, and again, this is no criticism, but some individuals find it difficult to be coached. And that's okay. Certainly where they feel that they've been an athlete all their life, they've trained a certain way and you know, they, they think they know what they're doing about food. It's like, well, okay, that's fine, but you're still 50 pounds overweight. You're sedentary. You know, you, you're, you're a diabetes risk and maybe even a stroke risk. And maybe maybe some help would be useful and i think it's it's difficult sometimes it's difficult for a type personality men and women obviously to hand themselves over and i guess fully sort of go okay right you uh, you tell me what to do i'll do it i think we all like to think that we can say that but i think the doing it is probably quite difficult how how have you found how have you found that aspect, I suppose, in terms of, I guess, handing over your nutrition and handing over probably very key elements of your life to someone the other side of the world t- to be told what to do? Like, How have you found that, I guess, that sort of setup? That took me a little bit of time. You know, I would normally consider myself quite coachable. But even with that being said, there is instances where, uh, you know, I'd, I'd start making some recommendations to Ash, who Ash is great, by the way. Great trainer. Love that guy. And so I'd, I'd make some recommendations and he's like, okay, well, I get that. However, let's just go back to trying this. And I'm like, well, I really wanted to try that. But, you know, I gave in and it, and after like two or three cycles of that, I realized, okay, Ash really knows what he's doing. 
I don't know what I'm doing. And I had to make that kind of a recognition about myself. And so I just, that's when I, that's when I really just, okay, whatever you tell me that I need to do, I'm going to do it. But that had to be paired with progress. Yeah. And so if I hadn't been seeing progress, you know, I might not have been open, open to that coaching. And so early on, there's a couple of things that happened for me that uh, um, were unexpected. You know, I was expecting to lose weight. I was expecting to gain muscle mass. But there's two things that happened that uh, I wasn't quite prepared for. One is that my resting heart rate went down. So in the first four to five weeks of working out, my resting heart rate rate dropped by 7 to 9%. And I wasn't wow. doing anything different with my cardio. It was just all my weight training. Which was, which was very impressive. The second yep. thing I noticed is that my flexibility increased significantly. And so, so I wasn't cool. doing, you know, yep. I wasn't stretching. I wasn't warming up. I wasn't doing the things I do now pre-workout, but my flexibility improved significantly. So my resting heart rate went down. My flexibility went up. At the same time that my weight was coming down, I was starting to see some physical changes in my body composition and obviously, my, my strength was increasing. I always go back to this, the demographic that we work with. Those, we're not just, we're not simply just working with people to get them in the shape of their life. As in, people don't tend to really come to us and say, I want to, I want, I want to get abs or something like that. Like that's cool. And most of the people we work with are probably going to end up with some degree of abs because we're just going to remove body fat, but it's probably not their overarching goal. Their overarching goal is I want to be in the shape of my life. Yes, but also I want to maybe live an extra decade and I want that extra decade, the quality of that to be incredibly high. So when I've moved away from my business or I've sold my business or I've come out the top of being in the C-suite or whatever that looks like, um, I've now kids have now got grandkids and, you know, and I'm I'm now set up to one, have been able to achieve all those things, but two, really have the ability to enjoy lots of most of the people we work with probably don't end up retiring. Like we understand that like, like entrepreneurial people don't retire necessarily. They just do they just do other things. Right. But we're certainly working with a cohort of individuals that are already exceptionally successful at the things that they do. They're already very successful, but they also then also know that they've been sacrificing themselves or letting themselves go. And I mean, I can think of a number of people I've spoken to who were actually in the process while I was talking to them of selling their business for humongous amounts of money, right? They're going to, they're going to come out the other side of it and technically never have to work again in their life. But but they're then actually quite scared that through the stress of trying to sell their business, they're they're already they're already getting heart palpitations. They're struggling to sleep at night. They're getting numbness in their hand. In other words, they're becoming a stroke and heart attack candidate. And like then they're thinking, that, what was all this worth? Like now I'm not going to get to spend all this amazing time with my family because I've I've actually not taken care of business myself through this process. And I think. So when we look at those individuals, bringing down resting heart rate, raising HRV, so heart rate variability, all these things then have a, a positive impact on things like um, blood pressure, cholesterol. Suddenly, suddenly our kidneys are not having to work so hard. Our liver's not. In other words, suddenly the health trajectory of the people that we work with is now expanding way, way further off to the horizon than it already was. But at the same time, in the here and now, they feel better, they're, they're performing better, they're, they're sharper, they're sleeping better, you know, cognitive function is there, no decision fatigue, business is easier to run. So I think it's, so for us, it's, it's, it's super, super cool to be able to see that. So for you looking off into the future, what do you think sort of 20, um, 2024 holds for you in, in terms of what we do here? What what do you see now the goals that you're sort of putting in, self in, in, in front of yourself for for the next sort of period of time that you're with us? Yeah, so uh, I'm just super excited about what the next four to six months or beyond really holds. And so um, uh, I have a ton of potential in my lower body. Okay. Just a ton of potential in my lower body. So I'm really focusing on growing maybe three to five pounds of muscle overall, but primarily in my lower body for a couple of reasons. One, I've been competing in endurance um, competitions like mountain bike racing, road bike racing, and, and hopefully this coming year, some triathlons. Yeah. And I'll admit, I've been riding with some gentlemen that are 15, 20, 25 years older than me, uh, road biking, and they are just destroying me. They're, uh, they're kicking my butt. Yeah. And, you know, I'm feeling like I'm in pretty good shape. I've been pretty experienced road biking, and these guys are just killing me. And so, uh, you know, this, through this winter, I want to grow some strength so I can be more competitive, get my cardio up. So I want to be competitive just within the group of buddies that I'm riding with, but also in the the endurance competitions that I plan to participate yep. in. Yeah. Um, but again, because I have so much potential in my lower body, I'd really like to uh, see where I can take that. 
So I'm, yeah. I'm very happy right now with my body composition from a body fat standpoint. Uh, so the, you know, now it's just learning how to manage my diet with the fuel my body needs to grow it grow, in a healthy, strength. safe way yeah. to, uh, to, yeah. to gain that strength and to gain that muscle mass. And, that, and that's then really putting a, a number of areas together. So one, you know, of course, managing all of the things in terms of recovery, in terms of diet, so correct diet in terms of now training to build, you know, new muscle tissue, you know, muscular strength, muscular endurance in terms of your legs. I mean, you look at any of the, I mean, look at any really good cyclist. If you ever look at an Olympian level cyclist, their thigh, their legs are huge. Like they've got so much power and drive in their legs, whether they'd be good at long distance, I'm not sure. i I imagine still probably yes. So you've got it's, you're now it's now then sort of that multidisciplined athlete look, isn't it? It's like you're already you're mm-hmm. already now really skilled in terms of just you know the gym work that's got you to where you are. You now you're now skilled in terms of the the, the dieting or the the nutritional structure, and of course you you know you're already you're now really sort of moving into this endurance world where it's a whole different set of skills and. Now trying to pull all of those things together, which is entirely possible. And we work now with, more than ever, actually, with individuals who are managing all of those things at once, like in, enjoy all of those elements. And so obviously for us, look, it's wonderful to see the progress that you've made. Um, it's great for us. Like I, like I say, it's great for us to know the direction to take people in. It's even more cooler for us when, you know, gentlemen like yourself come in who are like, yeah, but I'm going to imply, you know, apply myself. I'm going to, I'm going to go off and do the work. I'm going to, you know, like hand myself over to you guys. You clearly know what you're doing. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to listen, you know, still ask questions and push us as coaches. You know, why am I doing that? Why would this help? Like we, we love that because it feels that we feel that someone's engaged when that's happening, which is great. But ultimately, you know, what you've come in and done is, uh, you know, applied yourself in every discipline and area and like i always tend to say is people get people get the rewards that they deserve so if someone's not following a plan you know they're not going to get they're going to get the rewards that they deserve which are probably not the rewards that they wanted but for someone like you you know you've come in you've applied yourself you followed the plan so therefore you've you know you're getting and still enjoying getting the, the the rewards that are deserved upon you because of the effort that you've put in so we're always hugely appreciate you know appreciative of that and uh, and again, look, thanks for taking some time out to come and talk to me. I know that I'm sure you're probably super busy at this time of year. Um, I'm going to let you go on, get on with the rest of your day. And uh, I'll be keeping a very close eye on your endurance endeavors. I'll be looking forward to seeing how you uh, you progress in terms of your, you know, your leg development. And um, have you have you got any uh, endurance events planned in at any particular point next year? Uh, yeah, I have three planned right now. I'll probably f- uh, fit in a few more, but I plan to uh, complete my first ever triathlon uh, coming up here in June of this year. Uh, there's a little mini wow. duathlon that I complete at the end of May. And then there's two very significant mountain biking races that I'm planning to participate. One's a 69 mile mountain bike race, which would be the beginning wow. of June. And the other's a 40 mile mountain bike race, which will occur, uh, in next september wow so I have a number of pretty significant activities coming up yeah. uh, that i'm super excited about you've got a you've got a you've got a packed year ahead of you listen we're we're, we're delighted to play you know the, the 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 role that we're playing in helping you get to that i'll be i'll be very much looking forward to seeing um um uh, you know the reports coming back um, in our coaches meeting about how well you're doing which is obviously what we've already been seeing but listen look, i'm gonna i'm gonna let you go thanks for taking some time out of your day man i, I really do appreciate it yeah. thank you for being thank you for being part of us here awesome. sounds great andy thank you so much and thank you to your uh, entire team take care oh yep it's our pleasure yep. sir take care speak to you soon bye-bye bye now